Hi class, welcome to week five. So now we're going to get into informative speaking. There's a lot of information in the lectures and readings this week. So I would consider looking at the lecture notes, listening to this PowerPoint, and then reviewing all the information for your first larger speech you'll be doing in this class. So first I'm going to talk about the process of informative speaking briefly until I go into what informative speaking is. Uh, so there, are the creative process, there are five basic activities you will use to create an effective informative speech. They are starting, researching, creating, presenting, listening, and evaluating. You move creatively back and forth between each activity. So what is informative speaking? Well, there are different modes of what you can choose for your informative speech in this class. You could first pick a, an informative speech of description. You're describing an object, a person, an animal, a place, or an event. You can instruct about a process. This is also called an informative speech. I'm sorry, a demonstration speech. You can explain about a concept or issue, or you can report um, or a, put a brief on different findings. So after you choose what type of informative speech, then you can choose how to focus on your topic. I always say that pick a topic you are passionate about. Pick a topic that you are interested in. It'll come through in your speech. So you, you analyze your audience and the situation. This will help you determine your topic choice and informative speech type, what information your audience needs, how to make your speech relevant, and how to select support material. So what you want to do, create an informative idea bank that's slightly modified from what you learned about in Chapter 3. Uh, write this out on paper. Evaluate your speech assignment, what are the requirements, and then make a list of potential topics that you think might be good related to the speech type. Then you can select and narrow your informative topic. Eliminate any non-informative topics. Eliminate topics that do not interest you. Remember what I said, be passionate about your topic. Eliminate topics that are not appropriate for the audience or situation. Select topics that are completely new or add to your audience's knowledge. They should be unique. Unique topics are key for informative speaking. Your specific purpose should be a single statement merging together your general purpose to inform, your specific audience, your classmates, and the objective of your speech. Before you move on to create the central idea, the thesis statement, you should reconsider your audience and determine the best type of informative speech you need to give them. Will the speech be best to describe, instruct, or explain? Also called the thesis statement, the central idea is a concise one-sentence summary or preview of exactly what you want to say in your speech. So if your specific purpose is to inform my classmates about Yosemite National Park, the central ideal can either be this first one, Yosemite National Park is more than a park, it is an experience that can change people, or Yosemite National Park is more than a park, it is an experience that can change people through its adventures, its waterfalls, and the Great Half Dome. Then you can create a working outline or rough outline or roadmap for your final speech. Using questions is okay for the working outline, but they should be transformed into statements for the preparation outline. So how do you conduct the research for your informative speech? Well, the best methods of research, first, don't rely on one research to, tool, uh, i.e. the internet. <laughs> there are a lot of other tools out there. Rely heavy on facts, definitions, testimonies, and examples. You want a good mixture of supporting materials. Use government websites, pamphlets. They are very credible. And find materials that will interest your audience because they are relevant, unique, current, and easy to understand. You want to also use material from multiple perspectives and means. 
And if the topic is complex, consider your audience's learning styles. Remember that everyone learns differently. Then you want to think about how you construct an informative outline. Now remember, just like the other speeches you've done so far in the class, I will give a skeleton outline to you that you can fill in to make sure you hit all of the uh, requirements in our class. So here's a sample format of what you need. Again, if you use the outline I give you, you will have all of this at your disposal. Uh, don't forget to use the transitions that I give you. You know, if a lot of students forget to put the transitions in. You need to transition from point to point and then link to your conclusion as well. So we talked about um, organizing the body of a speech uh, in week four, and we're going to go into the more detail about the informative speech. So remember in week four, uh, we talked about chronological, spatial, topical, comparative, problem solution, and causal. Knowing what types of informative speeches these strategies fit with should help you begin to recognize which strategy you want. So you want to commit to a strategy then. Uh, many topics may fit into one or more strategies, so you want to pick the strategy that is best for your particular speech. Then you want to construct the main points. Remember what we said in week four with outlining. Use complete declarative sentences, write in parallel structure, make sure all your sentences are balanced. And then you want to organize your support materials. Subpoints to the main points contain the supporting material. Anticipate your audience needs. Don't assume they have all the knowledge or even small important details. So then what should you include in your introduction and conclusion? Again, we did a lot of this in week four, but you want to make sure there are some things you need in an informative speech, which is different than other types of speeches. So the introduction should be one of the most exciting and moving parts of your speech. It should pitch your speech to your audience. It should tell your audience what they need to learn more about your topic. Remember though, for informative speaking though, the introduction should not be more than 15% of the total speech time. For the conclusion, you know, leave your audience hungry for more knowledge about your topic. Your information was so unique, so novel, that they want to know more. It should inspire future research so that the audience goes out on their own to find more information. Um, and I would say the conclusion is short and informative speeching, probably no more than 5% of the total speech time. So what should you con consider then when preparing to present an informative speech? That's what I'll be talking about next. Language is so important. You need to be simple and clear with your teaching as a goal. Remember, informative speaking, you're not an advocate. You're a teacher. You are presenting knowledge to us. Use we and you to help include the audience. You want to avoid jargon, acronyms, and other unfamiliar references. Use vivid language and use language devices such as repetition to help your audience learn and remember. Finally, use previews and reviews and signals if you're giving a speech, to, especially if you're giving a speech to instruct. You need to take us with you through the speech. For delivery, think of these rehearsal guidelines. Practice your speech with your presentation outline, then reduce it to contain only the information you need for the delivery outline. This will help your overall eye contact um, delivery skills. Put this new outline on index cards. Also consider how your voice is for your informative speaking. Plan to make eye contact often. Now remember, your informative speech requires a PowerPoint. So you want to build redundancy and retention in your presentation aids, capture and keep your audience's attention. Um, the presentation aids should be used to summarize information, but don't use it to read off of your, your presentation. Why should we listen to you if we can just read off of it? And also use your, your presentation to build your own credibility. And then how should you evaluate an informative speech? You will all be evaluating informative speeches in this class. So when you watch the um, speech that you're required to watch, listening is crucial at understanding the and retaining speech information. As a speaker, be willing to adapt and adjust to audience feedback. But as an audience member, you can offer the speaker appropriate feedback. Uh, you'll do this through an assignment that I'll be giving. 
So the goal to give the audience new knowledge, a skill, or understanding relating to a particular topic, or to increase current knowledge, skill, or understanding. So answering these questions can help you evaluate the message, clarity, accuracy, and organization. So keep these questions in mind when you are performing the evaluation for this class. Other things to think about. Um, yeah, I'm not. You can pause here if you'd like to write this down. Use this checklist to evaluate informative speeches. So those are the basics of informative speaking. Um, now, what I would suggest you do is uh, you can look at the informative PowerPoint called the Three Ds. It just gives you a little more information on speeches of description, demonstration, definition. Um, look at the speech outline, look at the checklists, and of course review the informative speech that I've placed in the lectures and readings for this class.